Let's pray before we begin. Lord, please let us understand your word and put it in our hearts. May it shape our lives to be more like your son. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Real quick, if you like this content, please like, subscribe, and share this with your friends. Thank you. Occasionally, we need, to, we need to see God flex his muscles. And I think every once in a while, God in the Bible flexes his muscles just to see if we are looking. Oh, like a little boy rides down, about, down the road on a bicycle and says, Look, no hands. And uh, his little girlfriend's looking on, and he wants to impress his girlfriend. Our God is that way toward us. Our God loves, forgive me for putting it this way, our God loves attention. Our God loves adoration. Our God loves us to think that he's somebody. And so, uh, periodically in the Bible, at various occasions, he used, takes an event and causes something to transpire that will remind us of his unlimited power. Let us, for a few moments this morning, examine a few, not all, but a few, of these statements and the stories surrounding these statements where our God reminds us that he's all-powerful. I guess maybe I'm preaching to myself these days, and certainly this morning. If I ever need to be reminded that God can do anything, it's now. God had promised Abraham and Sarah a boy. He had said to Abraham and to Sarah many years before, before this scripture, he was going to give a boy. In fact, <clears throat> God had said to Abraham, look if you would toward the north, look toward the east, look toward the south. He said, I'm going to give you the land that you see, to you and to your seed, for an everlasting possession. God promised Abraham and Sarah, a boy. Years passed. And years became decades. And decades became almost a lifetime. And now Sarah is 90 years of age. Abraham is 100 years of age. When suddenly some messengers come, three, I think it was, they came to Abraham. And they announced to Abraham that God was going to give him and Sarah a boy. I don't know anything any funnier than that in the Bible. I just don't know <clears throat> anything any funnier than that in the Bible. Here's a fella, 100 years old, and a voice, or three messengers come from God saying, you and your 90-year-old wife are going to have a baby. I don't know anything funnier than that. I don't know anything. I mean, I, but to me, to think about that it bogs up my imagination. I mean, can you imagine the Lord saying, Abraham? Abraham says, hey, what did you say, Lord? And the Lord, Abraham, <clears throat> better tell Sarah to start knitting. Knitting for what? Because you're going to have a baby. And the Bible says, Abraham did exactly what you would do if you were a hundred and God told you you were going to walk the floor in the maternity ward in the waiting room. Abraham laughed. <laughs> Lord, you know how old I am? Yeah, you're a hundred. And I, we have a baby? Yeah, well, your wife is. And uh, <clears throat> it would have been a miracle the other way. <clears throat> but uh, he said, uh, so Abraham, he, he takes these messengers. They go to, Sarah, to, to the tent where he lived. And uh, Sarah's standing at the door of the tent. And the news is, is passed on to Sarah. Sarah, guess what? Uh, what's that? What's that? Now, Sarah, uh, you are going to have a baby. <laughs> and Sarah laughed and laughed. In fact, they named the boy Laughter. The word Isaac means laughter. They named him Laughter because they laughed so much because uh, they were having... Now, can you imagine that? Think about that. Mother, how old are you now? 110? Mother will be 88 in December. Is that right? 88 in December. And uh, now, suppose that Mother came to me, and she said, Son, I've got news for you. I'm going to get married. I'd say, Who's the crazy fool? <coughs> and she said, Oh, let's take... Uh, my girls have always wanted uh, Mother and R.G. Lee to strike something up. They've always wanted that. <coughs> and <coughs> I will admit 
that mother has winked at him a few times. I, I will admit that. <laughs> but um, anyway, <clears throat> let's suppose let's suppose that uh, that mother says calls me one day and says, "Son, I've got some news for you." As you know, been married now a couple of years, and uh, well, son, I'm going to name it after you. Wouldn't that be a sight? Now, that's, listen, <clears throat> that is exactly what happened. And, uh, and Abraham said, Lord, I'm a hundred years old, and my wife Sarah is ninety. How can these things be? And God asked Abraham the question, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Hey, I expect maybe a God that could do that, and I could pay, help, help you pay your tuition in college this year. I imagine a God that could, could do that, could give a baby to a 90-year-old woman and a 30-year-old man. I expect a God like that might even could take care of you in case the depression comes or a famine comes. Oh, listen, I've been reminding God all week this week, uh, as I realize school has started. I walked, went out to the college Wednesday and was out there Monday morning uh, and walked through the, through the buildings. And thank God, listen, there's not a nicer college in the whole world in that cottage. It's absolutely magnificent. And I saw the students as they came, over 500, I guess, new ones uh, this year. And I saw them as they came, and the older students came back, and it's so good to see them. And I sat on chapel there uh, Wednesday morning and conducted chapel, looked out over the student body, and uh, I got thinking, oh, my soul, in 16 weeks, two and a half million dollars. And I've been reminding God all week what he's what he's done for me in the past. I told him, Lord, you recall how you provided for mother and me when I was a boy. And you, provi- you recall, Lord, how you provided for me when I was a young preacher. And you recall how through these years you've supplied every need. And now, oh God, this Red Sea must be parted. The sun must stand still for a while. The Jordan River must be dried for a while. Uh, 5,000 folks have got to be fed. A miracle like those, it's got to take place. It must transpire. And I've been reminding myself all week and reminding God of what He's done before. And I reminded God, I said, Lord, You you did part the waters of the Red Sea. And You did feed 5,000 with, uh, with, with, with a few loaves and fishes. And, oh, God, do it now. Let me say this morning, ladies and gentlemen, there is a power, powerful God, an omnipotent God, a God who said, is anything too hard for the Lord? Uh, there was another story. The Israelites were in the wilderness. Three and a half million, some people think two and a half million, but at least there were 600,000 footmen. 600,000 uh, who were fighters in the army. And uh, they were in the wilderness, and they had no food to eat. You recall how that every morning this manna would come from heaven, sort of like a little one-a-day vitamin tablet would drop from heaven, and God's people would eat that little one-a-day pill from heaven, that little, that little uh, not manna, he- angel's food, the Bible says. But the people in Numbers chapter 11, they got, they got hungry for some flesh to eat. And they complained to Moses. They said, we were back in Egypt. We had flesh to eat. And now our soul loves us this light bread. All we have is a little pill every day. We want some flesh to eat. And Moses came to God and said, Oh, God, my people are complaining. They want to go back to Egypt now. They remember the onions and cucumbers and leeks and watermelon and garlic and the flesh they had back in Egypt. And now my folks are complaining. And said, Lord, take care of my people. And the Lord got a little angry. And he said, Don't tell the people. I'm going to feed them quail. 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 Moses said, Lord, there's 600,000. Is my treble all the way up? There are 600,000 uh, footmen here. Now, 600,000 men in the army, that's 600,000 women, I imagine. That's a million two hundred thousand. The other time you get 600,000 women and 600,000 men, uh, usually you've got a million and a half kids. In our church, they have four or five million. And uh, you'll believe it. Check our nursery and ask Mrs. Anu. Not only does she take care of the nursery, she helps fill the crazy thing up. <coughs> and... Uh, <coughs> Of all the people to complain about a big nursery. She comes to me and she says, Pastor, we've got to have a bigger nursery. I didn't know she was being a prophet. But uh, <laughs> anyway, the Moses said, Lord, maybe two and a half or three million people, three and a half million. Lord, did you know what you just said? 
You said you're going to feed us all quail. Why, well, Lord, we're out here in the wilderness. There's no quail out here, and there's nothing to shoot them with, nothing to get them with. And the Lord said, I'm going to feed you quail. Not for one day, not for two days, not for five days, not for ten days, not for twenty days, but for a month. You're going to have nothing but quail. Oh, my soul. Quail. Thirty days. Quail for breakfast. Quail for lunch. Quail for, for dinner. Quail for a midnight snack. Quail. Thirty days. In fact, God said, you're going to eat so much quail. I'm going to show those gripers. There's not a sin in the world that God hates like he hates griping and complaining. Not a one. Not a one. Not a one. And he said, I'll show them. He said, for thir- he said, they're going to eat it till it comes out their ears. Check the Bible. And comes out their nostrils. Now, I've never seen a quail come out of a nostril. <clears throat> That's what it said. And the Bible said, the Lord said this, these words. He said, is the Lord's hand waxed short? Cannot he who made man, cannot he who made quail, cannot he who made the earth, cause the quail to fall on earth to feed man for a month? And uh, the Bible says, and this is so sweet. Doc, I never noticed this this week. I've read this story. I've preached on it. Never noticed it this week. Did you know the Lord caused the quail to come? The Bible says two cubits high. Now, I always thought that meant that the quail died and stacked up two cubits, foot and a half. The distance between here and here is a cubit. Averages about 18 inches. So two cubits be three feet high. And uh, I always thought the Lord caused the quail to die, enough quail to die to let all the dead bodies of the quail stacked up two feet high. No, I found out something in the Bible this week I never had noticed before. Do you know what the Lord did? The Lord sent quail down and they flew two feet off the ground, uh, three feet off the ground. Just flew. I'm sure you noticed that before, but I'm a little dumb and I'm a little slow, and I never did. And uh, and uh, so, how do you, <coughs> fellas, how do you like to go quail hunting sometime and they fly at three feet? Huh? Well, that'd be, I still couldn't hit them. But, uh, but, uh, at three feet! And every time anybody wanted, uh, the Lord said, eat the quail! And they had nothing for quail, but quail, and they ate quail for thirty days. Why? Because God can do anything, that's why. And we all be reminded over and over and over again. Our Lord was on Mount Tabor one time. And uh, our Lord was uh, at the Mount of Transfiguration. He, he had seen Moses and Elijah and had talked with them. And there Peter, James, and John had shared that marvelous experience with Christ and Peter and uh, Moses and Elijah. And uh, they got, came back down off the mountain. And a man came up and he had a son that was, had, was that possessed of a devil. And he frothed at the mouth. And he tore off his clothes. And he threw himself down on the ground and rolled over and over and over in the ground. Young people, listen to me now. And, uh, and so, uh, the, the man came to our Lord and said, uh, said, Master, said, could you do anything for my boy? If thou canst do anything, please have mercy on us. And our Lord said, listen to this, our Lord said, if, he put the if on the other shoe, he said, if thou canst believe, now get this, all things are possible to him that believe it. All things. That means if you have a cancer, God could heal it. That means if, you, if you're blind, God could open your eyes. He may not see fit to open your eyes, but He does open blind eyes sometimes. That means God can still raise the dead. Right over here in Wheaton, Illinois, one time, uh, the president of Wheaton College told it about when, years ago, Dr. Blanchard told how a, a man had died, and they, they had covered him up, and a lady got under, the wife got under the, 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 the sheet that was over his body, and she stayed there, and she said, he's not going to die, he's not going to die, he's not going to die. And I think it was after, if I'm not mistaken, 10, 12, 14 hours, the, the, the man woke up, and he got up, and the wife started walking out the door with him, <laughs> dead man. And uh, <clears throat> so the doctor said, hey, you can't walk out the door, you're sick. The wife said, no, he's not sick, he's dead, now leave us alone. And they went home. Yeah, God can still do it. God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The fairest of 10,000 to my soul. God can do anything. 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 God can do anything but fail. And you recall how Jesus said, with, He said, There's nothing impossible to Him to believe in. 
And after our Lord had, had, had reached out and picked that fellow up, and the fellow was normal, and the devil was cast out of him. And uh, then uh, the, the disciples came up to our Lord, all but Peter, James, and John. And they said, Lord, while you were on Mount Tabor, or the Mount of Transfiguration, that fellow came to us and asked us to cast the devil out of his son. And, uh, by the way, if you'll beat the devil out of your son, you won't have to cast the devil out of him later. But uh, said, uh, why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus said, this kind cometh forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Listen, there is a way to get God to act. There is a way to get God to move. And that way is by begging God, prayer, and fasting, going without food and begging and pleading God, Oh, God, you've got to do it. Oh, God, you've got to do it. Listen, I've been thinking about a scripture all week. He who hath begun a good work will finish it. He who hath begun a good work will finish it. I'll tell you something else. That God can take care of whatever needs you have. Amen. Yes, He can. Right. He can help you find a job. He can help you be well. He can encourage your heart. And if some of you students, some of you nothing, we've had, I, I, I bet there's more homesickness per square inch in this room than there is in any room in America today. And God can settle you here. Students, may I say this to you, and I, maybe I'll say it tonight. Maybe the college some. May I say this to you? Some of the happiest young people in the world are students who've been here for a year or two or three. And they love it. And this is just as much home as their own home is to them. But they were just as homesick as you were when they first came. You give yourself a chance and in a few weeks you'll feel like, you'll feel like you're at home. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. I'm simply saying, whatever you need is, if God can take a womb... Ninety years of age, and if God can, can make that will be fruitful, uh, God can take the seed of a hundred-year-old man and let him become a father, a ninety-year-old lady. And if God can feed three and a half million Jews for a month in the wilderness with quail, and if God can take a fella who has been possessed of a devil all of his life, and all of a sudden he becomes a respectable me member of society, then God can take care of your needs. A young wealthy man came to Jesus one time, and he said, uh, asked him, said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And our Lord told him a few things, and he said, I can't do that. He just told him a few things you ought to do, just trying to test him. And then he said, who then can be saved? And our Lord said, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to get saved. Did you hear that? You know, that's one reason why I've been poor, and the Lord loves the poor people so much. And that's one reason why I don't take any much any money on my books, and that's one reason why I don't uh, put put any money away for a rainy day, because I want to be poor. God seems to love the poor so much, and I want God to love me a lot. And um, if God loves the poor, He dead sure loves this church. But anyway, He uh, <coughs> um, the Lord said it's easier. Now, one professor in seminary when I was in school said, "Now, young men," he said, "That doesn't mean a camel going through the eye of an eagle." He said in those days, they had, they had entrances or gates to, to the city. And they said they were low and you had to bend down. And the camel would go under because he had a hump in his back. He had to bend over. It was a short gate. And uh, that's where he went through. Well, if the Lord had meant a short gate, he would have said a short gate. No, the Lord meant needle. I got as much respect. Well, you say, camel, why don't you say that means a cigarette, threading a needle with a cigarette. No, sir. It means it is as impossible for a rich man to get saved as it is to take a camel off the desert and stick it through the eye of a sewing needle. That's what it means. You say, well, the house, that's impossible. It is with man. I bet you God can thread a needle with a camel or a whole herd of them in two seconds. I've never seen him do it, but I'm going to ask him when I get to heaven if there are any camels there, and they're not. I know there are horses there, and I'll say, thread one of the horse. God! <clears throat> and the Bible says, and when uh, it says, with God, all things are possible. Uh, it said, he said, who then can be saved? Is that impossible for a rich man to get saved? Who can be saved? 
and our Savior said, With God all things are possible. I'm so glad about that. I'm so glad we serve an omnipotent God who has no, who knows no impossibilities. And I say, let's believe. Listen, listen. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad. Say, that man whose son was possessed of a devil and, and from whose body the devil was cast out, listen carefully. You know how much faith he had? The Lord said, thou canst believe all things are possible. And uh, the fellow said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. He just believed a little bit. He said, Lord, I believe that much. And, uh, and the Lord said, okay. For that much, I mean the faith uh, size of a grain of mustard seed. The Lord said, okay. I love that faith. An angel one time came to a vir virgin lady, a lovely girl, in, um, in Nazareth. And the angel said, Mary, you're going to conceive in your womb and bear, for, bear a child. And Mary said, you got mixed up with somebody else. <laughs> I'm engaged, but I'm not married. I've never even known a man. That's a good idea for any young lady to be able to say when she's engaged until her wedding day. And uh, I don't even know a man. And the angel said, that which is conceived in thy womb is of the Holy Ghost. And Mary said, I can't understand it. And the angel said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. I was looking around the building this morning, looking at my people and knowing the burdens you bear. You see, I have 135 counseling sessions a week. You multiply that by 10, that's, that's 1,350. Multiply that by 100, that's 13,500 which means I have 6,250 counseling sessions a year. That means I know something about most everybody here. I know your burdens. I know your needs. I know where your son is, some of you. I know he's gone. I know some of you have daughters who are gone today. You go to the room at night. She's away in a home somewhere because she wouldn't obey. I know that. I go to bed at night so often. And I think of all the mothers and dads in our church who are going to bed and don't know where their daughter is or where their son is. I know you have burdens. I know your heartaches. I know your needs, many of you. Let's be reminded again today, our God is an omnipotent God. Amen. He can do anything. Take these promises and squeeze them over and over again. Hear it. There's nothing impossible to him that believe it. All things are possible with God. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Whatever you need is, you trust him. Tonight I'm going to preach on a message I think you'll want to hear. I'm going to say some things along, along this line. But you let the pagan communists stick their tongue out at God all they want to. And you let the heathen skeptics and the humanists and the, and the new morality crap. They have somebody they want to say. I know. I know. I know. There's a God in heaven. And I know that God can supply your needs. And I know he wants to. I know he wants to. <laughs> When Becky was home, <coughs> she used to butter me up an awful lot. So often she'd say to me if she wanted a new dress or something, she'd say, Daddy, you look ten years younger than any man your age in the church. You say, well, you knew she was lying, didn't you? Yep, yeah. knew she was lying. Though I do agree with her. You say, you believe that? No, I don't believe it, but I, but I agree with her. I know I'm lying too when I say I look ten years younger than anybody that's thirty-five. <laughs> but you said you know she's lying. Yep, I knew she was lying. Well, did you spank her? No, didn't spank her. Why didn't you spank her? Because I wanted her to say it again. I like to hear it. And if she really wanted something big, she'd say, "Dad, turn your head down like that." And she'd look at the top of my head. She'd say, Dad, 
you've got hair growing, don't you, again? He says, you, you're getting a second head of hair. <laughs> and I said, yeah. You know that? Yeah. I've tried everything. <coughs> I've tried everything for hair. One of our ladies said, <coughs> said, take some vodka. And you mix some kind of stuff with vodka. And you, you, uh, you get your little cotton swab, you pull your hair like that, mm, like that back, and you do it, and it'll grow hair. I did it for two years and figured I'd just go ahead and drink that stuff instead of using it on my head. It didn't do any good. I didn't drink it. Don't get the word around. But I tried that. I've been to Thomas Hair Specialist. I've tried that. I've not been and not going to go where some of you fellows go. And uh, somebody said, Bill Harvey said, uh, said I, this, I haven't got much hair, but it's all mine. He said, this will be all mine after two more payments. But uh, I'm saying this. Becky knew how to get things from Dad. She'd remind me, Dad, you're looking so young. You're the best dad in all the world, little rascal. That's why I'm poor. And uh, our father likes to hear the same type talk. Say, Lord, you sure are wonderful. <laughs> and the Lord said, <laughs> Thanks. He says, how do you know? Because he made us in his image, and we like that. That's how I know. You check sometimes and find out how, how, how the Old Testament characters got, uh, got uh, answers to prayer. David would say, thou hast said. Lord, look here. If you don't believe it, read what you said. Right there. Lord, it's out of prayer. I write that? Yep. What are you going to do about it? I'm going to honor it. Do what I said I'd do. And check sometimes how they buttered God up. Huh? Thou the God who didst part the waters of the Red Sea. And the Lord would say, Sure did. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Huh? I, you say, oh, oh, I know. I've been using those methods for years and years and years and years. That's how I know. God loves to be, he loves to flex his muscles. And God delights when his children come to him and tell him how wonderful he is. And then, thank God, he is able, he is able to take care of your needs. Amen. And this morning, if you are his child, he'll make you his child. And you can say with the great the Apostle Paul, we may call him Abba, Father, or Heavenly Papa. Take him and squeeze him. Nothing too hard for the Lord. All things are possible. Nothing impossible to God. To him that believeth, all things are possible. Squeeze them. Believe them. I expect he might answer your prayers Amen. and supply your needs. Let us pray. Thank you for listening. And if you like this, please subscribe and consider liking my Facebook page and joining my group, Jesus Answers Prayer. May God bless your day.